Shalom partners and friends. We are so excited to welcome you to Israel Justice Night. We greet you from Jerusalem, where it is currently the middle of the night. You can see all the lights of Jerusalem behind us. We were hoping to do this in person, but we are so grateful for technology that allows us to be together. <laughs> so you may be asking, what is Israel Justice Night? It is a time where together we share our hearts and passion, joining God's promises to bring justice to Israel and her people. Isaiah 33.5 says, The Lord is exalted, for He dwells on high. He will fill Zion with justice and righteousness. Amen. Let us present ourselves. I'm Lydia Morgan, JIJ's Chief Operations Officer, and with me is Flavia Sivald, our CEO. Thank you for joining us this evening to stand with Israel. We know that you care so much. We prepare highlights of the impact that you're making in the Holy Land. Mm. Israel Justice Night is JJ's annual fundraiser. And in addition to showing you your impact, we are holding a silent auction. Mm. We have selected special items, which some of you have already bid on, and we encourage everyone to quickly register and get your bids in. We are counting on you. Stay with us as we feature our main projects and moving testimonials directly from the field. Let us begin with a short introduction to the scope of our work. The Jerusalem Institute of Justice is a legal, non-partisan NGO founded in 2004 to defend democracy, freedom of conscience, and human rights promoting the legitimate standing of the State of Israel among the nations. We advocate, represent, and are a voice for those marginalized groups in the region who are underserved and whose voices can't be heard. Using legal tools, our team, together with 40 interns per year, are working passionately to impact society in the courts, governments, and academia media forums in Israel and across the globe. Our free legal aid department provides representation for religious minorities across the nation, advocating for their civil rights and helping them establish their lives. Over a thousand cases have been handled since our establishment, including 23 Supreme Court victories. JHA also advocates for victims of human trafficking, acting as a leader in the fight to eradicate prostitution in Israel promoting rehabilitation and positive changes to existing legislation. The universality of human rights is a standard that requires constant vigilance and protection. Our international law and public diplomacy department dedicates thousands of hours a year to create awareness and policy changes with the goal of positively impacting the lives of those living in oppression. JJ has impacted over 10 million lives. However, the defense of minorities and the uncovering of human rights abuses continue to date, making the fight for justice ongoing. We ask that you support us in our efforts to advance peace in the Holy Land. As you can see, we understand the importance of a Jewish homeland and its position in the Middle East. We also feel the pain of our neighbors subjected to the tyrannical whims of their leaders. With all of the disinformation out there, it is imperative that as advocates for Israel, we take a clear stand for justice and truth. We're gonna take the next few minutes to delve a bit deeper and to hear from Advocate Ori Murad as he highlights our efforts that promote the state of Israel in the global arena. At JAJ, we combat the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement against Israel, and we promote projects to educate future influencers. I am Advocate Ori Murad, Director of JAJ's International Law and Public Diplomacy Department. 
through the utilization of our legal and advocacy tools, we strive to uphold human rights in the Middle East and safeguard the legitimate standing of the State of Israel among the nations. In order to further peace and democracy across the region, our work targets perpetrators of human rights violations that have thus far enjoyed impunity. I oversee our research team, which conducts the documentation and presentation of testimonies, evidence and complaints to the International Criminal Court at The Hague and various governmental bodies around the globe. Tear down the bridges, drain all the rivers, burn down the town hall, there are no winners. Sharpen the scissors, cut off the feathers, pull off the triggers. I'm glad to be a part of an organization who's actively fighting anti-Semitism, BDS, and is promoting human rights in the Middle East. It gives me great joy to work with a team that is passionate about bringing justice to the land. My name is Miriam. I'm from Germany. I'm studying law. I am interning for two months at JAJ. My name is Emanuela. I come from Italy and I'm an intern in JAJ. I'm Asher from Canada. I recently graduated law school. Hi, I'm Yaroslav. I research the United Nations Convention Against Torture. I'm working on a communication to the International Criminal Court. I really like to have the opportunity to add a voice that is somewhat different. It's an amazing experience because it put in practice what I studied for many years. Hi, I'm Karen. I like working here at JIJ because as much as we care about each other, we care about other people's needs in the Israeli society. I enjoy sharing JIJ's work on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. Follow us there and share with your friends. No matter how you feel about the United Nations, it's the one place on planet Earth where nations get together and attempt to speak with one voice. That's why their resolutions can make a big difference. So when people all around the world see that approximately 40% of the UN Human Rights Council resolutions were against just one country, most of us would assume that country must be a really bad place. Perhaps ruled by, oh, say, a genocidal dictator who kills his own people, or maybe a tyrant continually threatening to annihilate another country. But actually, the country that has been condemned more times than every repressive country on Earth combined is a democracy the only viable democracy in the Middle East, Israel. And with these repeated resolutions against Israel, it's easy to see why so many in the international community perceive Israel as a major cause of world problems. But are all these resolutions really justified? 
Because whether or not you agree with how Israel is handling its many challenges, when you do a basic comparison, like the number of deaths Israel is responsible for with the number of condemnations they've received, and then make that same comparison with other countries, it paints a surprising picture of a possible double standard. What could explain the enormous imbalance? Quick history lesson. In 1975, Cuba needed to gather support in order to take down the biggest democratic superpower dominating the global schoolyard, the United States. Seeing how the UN was mostly controlled by the democratic superpowers, Cuba, along with other communist nations, finally found a way to even the playing field. Because it just so happened that, at the same time, a number of Muslim countries were looking for new creative ways to gang up on Israel. So the communists realized that by joining the Muslims' anti-Israel coalition, they could create an unstoppable voting bloc inside the UN. Because with every resolution they passed against Israel, they simultaneously discredited Israel's ally, the United States. So in 1975, the newfound communist Muslim voting bloc spearheaded the passing of a UN resolution that officially stated, Zionism is a form of racism. Yes, Zionism. The movement trying to find ways to protect Jews from racism was redefined as racism. Which is kind of like saying the civil rights movement is racism and Martin Luther King is a racist. This is why resolution after resolution after resolution against Israel from 1975 until this day easily passes through the UN. Have you heard the propaganda and lies of the BDS movement? The boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement calls for various forms of boycott campaigns against the state of Israel. This toxic movement operates in the name of Palestinian human rights, but in reality it harms those it claims to help. The BDS movement is not only intended to politically pressure the state of Israel to withdraw from Judea and Samaria regions, but rather aims at the elimination of the state of Israel and the establishment of a one Palestinian sovereign state from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea. BDS leaders maintain ties to terrorist operatives, even until today. So learn the critical facts and defend Israel from the most slanderous accusations made by the BDS movement. Because the most powerful weapon we have is the truth. In the previous section, you saw how important it is to advocate for Israel and educate for justice. There is no just society when there continues to be women, men, and children trapped in the slavery of the sex trafficking, which is a reprehensible phenomenon, not only in Israel, but worldwide. JJ's Project NOAA addresses the abuses of human rights and is successfully setting the foundation for legislative change and working with the Israeli government to create long-term rehabilitation. Today we ask for your generosity to help us save more mm. lives. Please join our silent auction right now and bid on your favorite items. You can also donate directly to this vital project by clicking on the donate button on the landing page. We are now going to take a few moments to hear from Shuli Mualem, a member of the Israeli parliament and we will meet Yedida, one of our interns. We are so proud of Yedida and we want to show you how JIJ empowers and encourages our students to present their research at the highest levels of government. Together, we are changing society. <laughs> מדינת ישראל מתנגדת לניצול, ניצול של נשים, ניצול של גברים וניצול של נערים ונערות. מבחינתנו זנות מנוגדת לכל ערך שמישהו מאיתנו מאמין בו. ערך יהודי, ערך דמוקרטי, ערך מוסרי, ערך אנושי הכי בסיסי. אני מבקשת להגיד שלושה דברים על זנות. אין בחירה בזנות. אף אישה לא בוחרת בזנות. 
אל זנות מסלילים החיים, חיים של גילוי עריות, חיים של תקיפות מיניות, חיים של מציאות כלכלית בלתי אפשרית. דבר שני, הליכה לזונות הוא לא דבר נורמטיבי. עשייה של מסיבות רווקים עם זונה, זה לא נורמלי, זה לא נורמטיבי. אתה לא יכול לעשות מסיבת רווקים ומחר להתחתן בחתונה עם אנשים רגילים, כי אתה כבר לא שם. להביא אה, אה, חיילים במסיבת גיוס לזונות, זה דבר לא נורמטיבי. להביא נער אה, בתהליך התבגרות לזונה, זה בטח ובטח לא נורמטיבי. מבחינתנו, יש פה שילוב כוחות, שילוב של משרדי ממשלה, משרד המשפטים, משרד הרווחה, משרד האוצר, משרד החינוך ומשרד הבריאות, חברות וחברי כנסת שמובילים את זה, וארגונים, אה, הקואליציה שעוסקת בסחר בנשים וזנות, המכון, מכון ירושלים לצדק, קואליציית הארגונים הדתיים. כל זה כדי לשלב כוחות לאמירה הברורה. זנות היא לא משהו שמדינת ישראל מסכימה שיהיה במרחב הציבורי או הפרטי שלה. Previously, I did my national service in the Ministry of Justice and the Department Against Human Trafficking and got acquainted with the work um, JIJ does in regards to human trafficking. And so I thought over the summer break it would be a nice place to volunteer and sort of deal with these issues again. I think I've learned a lot about the ability to create a productive and helpful work environment and how much that can be important to the final product of your work. My project came in light of a recent district court decision in Tel Aviv banning the use of strip clubs. Um, the decision stated that strip clubs are inherently degrading towards women and in light of that it uh, should not be allowed as a legitimate form of entertainment in Israel. Um, my project dealt with considering what actually goes on in strip clubs and looking into the very artificial distinction we have created between brothels and strip clubs. The treatment that women receive in strip clubs doesn't actually differ that much from the treatment they receive in brothels. And so therefore, the only real distinction we have is in the way society treats it. Whereas strip clubs are acceptable form of bachelor parties, drafting parties, and generally accepted form of entertainment, brothels are not. And so what I did in this research is look into different legal bases in the Israeli legal system on which we can base uh, the ban on um, strip clubs, looking into the right of people to dignity, to equality. Um, I looked into international law and how it relates to women in strip clubs and I considered the Icelandic model which uh, bans the use of strip clubs and whether or not we can enforce it here in Israel. אז um, קוראים לי דידה ג'ייקובס, אני באמת uh, עשיתי התמחות במכון ירושלים לצדק uh, בנושא של מאוד עיני חשפנות בחודשים האחרונים. המסקנה המרכזית uh, בעצם מהמחקר שעשיתי הייתה המלצה על יישום המודל האיסלנדי. אז קודם כל המצב החוקי כיום בארץ הוא לא ברור, אין הגדרה ברורה למהו מועדון חשפנות, תחת איזה תנאים הוא יכול לעבוד, וההסדרה היא פשוט לא, היא לא, היא לא ברורה. מה שזה יוצר זה הסדרה ספורדית, יש לנו מוניציפליות מסוימות שמאפשרות את הפעילות של מועדוני חשפנות ואחרות שאוסרות עליהן. הבעייתיות כאן היא שנוצרים לנו אזורי סבלנות, שמוכרים לנו בדוגמה בתל אביב, שבהם מתאפשרת הפעילות של חשפנות. החשפנות כביכול אמורה להיות ריקוד לצורך גירוי מיני, אבל אנחנו רואים שברבים מאוד מהמקרים יש גם ציפייה לפורקן מיני, והמעודנים הם הפרואקטיביים כאן. הם מספקים חדרים פרטיים שמאובזרים במגבות ובחומרי שיחה, שמעידים על מה המטרה של החדרים הפרטיים האלה. היחס הדואלי של המשפט הישראלי, שמטיל קלון על בית בושת, אך מתיר את המשך הפעילות של מועדוני החשפנות, אין לו אמת במציאות. אבל גם אם נפעל תחת ההנחה שלא מתבצעת שם זנות, הפעילות של מועדוני החשפנות היא לא לגיטימית, וזוהי הכשרה של שרץ. כל המועדונים האלה מבוססים על החפצה של נשים וניצול של נשים. אם אנחנו מסתכלים כיום על חברה שמדברת על הקמפיין של מי טו, על איסור צריכת זנות, אנחנו מדברים על יצירת חברה שלא מעודדת סחר בבני אדם, כל המטרות האלה לא עולות בקנה אחד עם מועדוני החשפנות. מועדוני החשפנות הם מקום שכל המטרה שלו היא פגיעה בנשים. זה מקומות שבהם תופסים נשים, מציקים לנשים, מטרידים נשים, ומה שהמחוקק הישראלי אסר בכל מקום אחר, פתאום הופך לנורמה אם תולים שלט של מועדון חשפנות בכניסה. כדי לסכם את הנקודה הזו, אני חושבת שיש לנו אחריות כחברה לבוא ולומר מה היחס שאנחנו רוצים לתת לנשים, מה היחס שמגיע לבני אדם מעצם היותם בני אדם, 
וכדי באמת להיות מסוגלים לומר שידינו לא שפכו את הדם הזה, ושיש לנו אחריות דווקא על אנשים הכי מוחלשות בחברה שלנו, צריך ליישם את המודל האיסלנדי שלא מאפשר את הפעילות של המאדונים. We are humbled by God's blessing on JIJ and the favor he has given our small organization to make such a huge difference by passing legislation that criminalizes the purchase of sex and makes lap dancing illegal. You are part of everything we do. Thank you for partnering with JIJ. Let's continue with a look at our free legal aid department and how together we are protecting freedom of religion in Israel. I am advocate Rotem Ben Simchon and the director of the legal department at JIJ. We work to advance the protection of civil rights and religious freedom for minorities under the Israeli law. We do this by providing pro bono legal aid for victims of discrimination, serving over 300 families since our founding. Not only do we provide representation every step of the way, we're changing lives and bringing families together. We are establishing communities and answering prayers. We are making Israeli civil society stronger. Deuteronomy 16.20 says, Justice and only justice you shall pursue, that you may live and possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you. At JIJ, we care for people, we pursue justice, and the law is our tool. In the past 16 years of serving the community, we have been fulfilling dreams, reuniting families, building communities, and safeguarding freedom of religion and conscience in Israel. We have successfully handled over a thousand cases and won 24 Supreme Court victories. Each of these numbers represents a name, a face, a story of families reunited, dreams fulfilled, and prayers answered. Hello, my name is Katya. Uh, this is my husband, uh, Denis. Uh, we are Christians and uh, uh, we married in Russia. I came in Israel and uh, we came to government, uh, bring our documents. And uh, government said uh, that uh, I need back in Russia because, uh, because I am a Christian, because uh, they told us uh, our marriage not true. We uh, came to one organization, JIJ, and uh, they start uh, help us. And 
uh, I need uh, back in Russia and uh, they work with the Dennis. Uh, we have uh, several courts and uh, uh, after uh, they work we, we are win, wind <laughs> and uh, now I, I'm here in Israel I uh, could uh, back uh, and to be with my, with my husband and I want to uh, say thanks uh, so much for this organization, for these people, for Flavia, for Rotem, uh, our lawyer. <laughs> very, very big thanks. <laughs> uh, thank you. Hi, David. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you, Rotem. I'd like to uh, welcome you and uh, everyone who's watching the Christchurch in Jerusalem and the old city of Jerusalem, in fact. So, thank you for this opportunity. I've been uh, leading this congregation in this community for the last 12 years. And uh, we as Christians, or believers, whatever term you like to use, we are a very, very tiny minority in this country. For example, there are close to a million people in Jerusalem. They are either Jews or Muslims. In the Christian community, it numbers 15,000 people. And throughout the state of Israel, I think there might be less than 200,000 Christians out of a population. Uh, I don't I think Israel's getting close to 9 million, 8 million people, 9 million people, I'm not sure. But it just shows that we're a tiny, tiny minority. And like all minorities, we're unsure yes, how to use the system, how to give our rights. Um, the government bureaucracy here, or most people, they're not very sensitive to the needs of the Christian community or they're ignorant, perhaps not on purpose, but uh, again, we're such a tiny minority. So minorities uh, everywhere around the world, including here in Israel, we are at a loss. Oftentimes we feel like we don't want to push, or we're hesitant to demand what the law actually entitles us to. So it really helps to have someone who's inside help us who are outside. And that's where JIJ comes in. We have uh, Israeli citizens and Israeli Jewish lawyers who, again, have a great sensitivity uh, for our needs, who care about uh, human rights on many different levels, who want to see our small communities thrive and even uh, integrate well into this society. And uh, there's no other organization like it in the country that uh, takes up uh, our issues and, by the way, the issues of other minorities and uh, helps in, in such a beautiful and uh, practical way. I think JIJ actually really sums up in a way uh, the biblical commandment that uh, one should love their neighbor as them. Their, uh, you know, as yourself, and uh, you truly uh, do that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So, why did you approach to JIJ? So I had to sum it up at least in two words. I would say passion, yes, uh, and experience. But I think there's also something else that's worth considering and that uh, makes uh, JIJ very valuable. Because you're not only helping Christians you know, who have legal trouble, you're, you have a, a much wider uh, and, and bigger approach. For example, one of the really, I think, the most important things is that uh, JIJ helped pass legislation which criminalize prostitution in this country. And that uh, legislation will bring an end, or is starting to bring an end already, to um, the uh, slave trade, or, or to, I don't know if that's the right word. Yeah, that's not a product. Yeah, the importing women illegally into this country, yes, to serve uh, as prostitutes. So when I think I'm going to work with JIJ, I'm going to work with an organization that's has kind of a big vision, I guess, for bringing justice and goodness to Israeli society. And as a believer and a Christian, and someone who wants the best for Israel, um, I love the work that uh, JIJ is doing because it's making Israel uh, a better place uh, on the whole. It's not only helping me, but it's uh, really uh, bringing goodness and righteousness, uh, perhaps in a limited human way, but that's still very important. To, uh, to Israeli society. JIJ offers its services for free. And in a country where uh, most people certainly don't make a lot of money, in a country where uh, legal help is indeed uh, very expensive, 
JIJ is a lifesaver, uh, has been for hundreds of people and will continue to be uh, life-saving for perhaps thousands of people uh, in the future. And of course, we're living uh, at a time when uh, the population uh, is increasing here, or we do have more and more believers, and many, but yet at the same time, the, the, the misunderstanding or the lack of sensitivity uh, from government officials uh, certainly doesn't seem to be diminishing. And uh, we need to help JIJ acquire a bigger staff. They need more lawyers so that they can help more people here. So look, and they're doing incredible uh, and amazing work, but unfortunately, we are not able to clone you yet. And so uh, we have to hire more. other attorneys uh, like you with your knowledge and your passion. And really, as I said before, with your, your great love for, uh, for your neighbors, especially those who might be called strangers in this country or strangers in the land. And uh, if I can appeal to, to the donors or those watching uh, this video, uh, please consider giving generously to JIJ. They're a very effective organization uh, and your money uh, is used as well spent as bringing good results. Thank you for the kind words and thank you for talking to me and sharing it. You're welcome. Thank you for all the help that uh, you've given uh, people in our community. We will continue to do the best we can okay. and provide the best legal aid, pro bono legal aid service that we can okay. provide. Thank you. You will now hear from an Israeli lawyer who, after exhausting all legal records, decided to bring her own client to JJ and how that decision impacted the outcome of this case. My name is Shira, um, a wife and a mother for one, <laughs> for a lovely two years old, and also a lawyer here in Jerusalem. The client came to the office and I met her and she described a very emotional story about being an Ethiopian, Falashmura. Uh, she was with her, she lived with her family in Ethiopia and dreamed of coming to Israel. And after many years of living in camps and um, non-permanent, temporary places, she finally got the permission and made Aliyah along with her family and she came to Israel, she invested herself in Israel along with her children and she opened a business, went to Ulpan, went to a Giyur and she was really uh, involved in Israel with all her heart and actions. She was a citizen of course, uh, made Aliyah, so it was very surprising I think that one day she went uh, for a runs in the Ministry of Interior and instead of doing what she asked, I think it was a passport thing, maybe, uh, instead of this they just took her ID and suddenly, without any warrant, she just, they just replaced her citizenship with um, temporary residency. Nothing helped. Actually, it was very strange. No one would give me any answers about her case and no one would reply why they would do that. And it was just a war. It, it was very exceptional, very strange. And the more actions I did, the less chances I felt was for her case because no one answered me. And she her funds for this case was getting low, actually were well, non-existent at the time. And I, it, it was getting um, it was getting, there was no hope. After realizing that I can no longer help to the client, I decided to take the case to JJ. I worked with JJ before and I knew that they have the expertise, they have the passion and the motivation to help clients exactly like my client because they give 
free legal aid and they have they have a lot of motivation to help people that their rights are being ignored in this area of human rights and uh, immigration and hurting rights of people who are not uh, natives here in Israel. I know that if there is still hope for my client, it will be in JJ. Without free legal aids, my client would now be a resident with less rights, with less hope, with less trust in the system. The free legal aid just gave her a life back, literally. So uh, after JJ accepted the case for me, happily, I must say, um, they just did miracles. This is what I have to say, actually, because I tried everything, but they had a fresh point of view. It just did it, because they succeeded when everybody fails, because Jerusalem Institution of Justice just took the case and invest the whole force into it the legal department and the head of the Jerusalem Institution of Justice. Everyone just came by and invested everything in this case. This is not happening in other offices and law firms and regular law firms. You can see how you must have a non-profit organization as JIJ in society. Otherwise, people's rights and the most low and poor and weak people in society will be avoided, will get hurt. And I think we're lucky to have an organization as JJ in our society to help them and deal with what no other firm will do. As you just saw, our goal is to strengthen those that are the weakest members of society, which is why we come alongside Holocaust survivors and lone soldiers. We honor their sacrifices and victories over hardship. We provide humanitarian aid and community support. As you are seeing these testimonies of love, remember the upcoming holiday season and bid on your favorite items for your loved ones. It's really important for JIJ to help Holocaust survivors because there are only approximately 150,000 left in the state of Israel. Um, their average age is 88 and they of course are dying every year. Soon there will be no one left to give first-hand accounts of the past. It's really important that we remember the Holocaust. It's important that we honor these uh, precious lives and um, it's important for us to provide comfort for them while they are still with us. In addition to providing blankets, warm gears and clothes, we also have fun events together and promote cultural, cultural activities so we all can learn from each other and really share. These are fun events for the Holocaust survivors. It, it's uh, tailored around them and their activity level and their needs. Uh, we bring musicians, we bring singers. In order to reach the Holocaust survivors in the most need. Uh, we work with social services, Israeli social services, and with several um, other NGOs. We really want to get to understand their story. The past is our past. Mm -hmm. To learn for the future and towards the future, for the coming generations, for our kids and grandchildren. And we want to also give the opportunity to our interns that are the youngest generation to get a chance to interact and meet these wonderful people that had such a special life uh, with suffering and happiness. 
boss. חג שמח ושנה טובה לכולם ואנחנו פה בזכות מכון ירושלים לצדק שחלק מהפעילות השנתית שלו מסייע לחיילים בודדים ומקיים את הערב הנפלא הזה והיוצא דופן הזה לזכות החיילים ארוחת ערב נהדרת ומתנות וחוויה שמבחינתנו היא סופר חשובה וכולי תקווה שהחיילים ייהנו שיהיה להם ערב מהנה, חג שמח, שנה טובה לכולם, תודה. Right now, there is an average of 6,300 lone soldiers serving in the Israel Defense Forces. After a long week at the army, serving the state of Israel, these lone soldiers have no home to go back to, no family, no money to buy food for Shabbat dinner. The Jerusalem Institute of Justice is helping these lone soldiers in their daily struggles. Mahon Yerushalayim Letzedek Azar Yilargish Ubmai Mishpacha Ayeda Shem Notnim Li Vaizra Nafshit Vagufanit Shani Mekabel Mem Ema Shu Shif Shal Imdod Jay Jay Doagim Lanu Laruchot Chamot Beshishi Laochel Besofi Shavu Lechagigot Mishutafot Bechagim Vafilu Le Mutzre Chashmal Bgadim Vepiluot Manot Yachad Kmo Mishpacha With a recurring donation of thirty dollars a month. You will improve the life of a lone soldier who is sacrificing for their country while facing personal struggles. Thank you and God bless you for showing you care about the state of Israel and its soldiers. Your small gesture will change lives and make Israel stronger. As we come to the end of our time together this evening, here is another opportunity to see the faces of our amazing team and to review each of JJ's main projects. We had a great time filming it and one of the most holy sights in the world. <laughs> Israel, the only homeland for the Jewish people, has the power to reinforce tolerance, truth, ethics, and morality by infusing its democratic values throughout the justice system, which in turn strengthens the fiber of the nation. Our legal and research expositions have been presented before the International Criminal Court at The Hague, the United Nations, Israeli and European parliaments, as well as esteemed academic institutions all across the globe. We provide pro bono legal aid for Christian minorities in Israel suffering from discrimination. We defend their legal rights and help them integrate into Israeli society. for victims of prostitution and human trafficking by changing legislation, providing humanitarian aid and securing opportunities for rehabilitation. Generosity is a natural instinct. It usually begins close to home for the benefit of those we can see with our own eyes. But on Israel Justice Night, we're asking to look beyond our personal horizons. When you partner with JIJ, your gift makes Israel stronger, the Jewish people safer, and safeguards freedom and promotes justice across the globe. Everything we do, every cause, every project, every campaign we take on is integral to our vision of pursuing justice and saving lives. We invite you to be part of Israel's story today. Micah 6.8 reads, He has told you, old man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? 
but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Which manifestation of justice has God placed on your heart? Maybe you identify with the Christian community facing persecution for their faith. Maybe it is your heart's cry for trafficked women, or you are passionate about advocating for the Jewish homeland. JIJ has a heart for justice and is a voice for people. Each of our projects touch hurting parts of Israeli society. We encourage you to partner with us and engage in a deeper way with the love that God has given you for the stranger, the widow, and the orphan. We are doing this together. Yeah. Our silent auction will remain open for two more days, so keep tracking and bidding on your favorite items. There is also the option to partner by donating directly to JJ and blessing those we serve together. It was an honor to spend this time with you. Until we meet again, blessings from Jerusalem. Lydia and Flavia mm -hmm. on behalf of the JJ team. Good night and shalom from Jerusalem. Good night. Good night. Israel has the most museums per capita in the world. You can have four totally different landscapes in two hours of driving. Woke up late? Don't worry, you still have many hours of sun. Israel is the startup nation of the world. You can sit on a bus next to a Jewish Orthodox, a woman with a hijab, and a priest. Israel has 137 beaches. You can say hi to a total stranger on the street and be greeted like a long lost friend. Israeli wine is superb. You don't have to wait for sales. You can bargain the price at any time of the year. Israeli people have a great sense of humor. In one day, you can have breakfast in the vibrant city of Tel Aviv, lunch in the peaceful desert, and still be on time to watch the sunset on the Mount of Olives. Israel is the only country that revives an unspoken language. Shalom! Sitting in a cafe, you can hear conversation about the weather in Russian, fashion in Italian, and politics in French. Hummus is not a dip, it's a whole meal. Then we can start on Thursday night. Every week there is a different kind of festival going on. If you're up to it, you can run from west to east in under two hours. You can dance to trans music on the street with religious Jews. It has nine UNESCO heritage sites. Sabi! Israel is really pet friendly. Need something? Don't worry. They will create an app for us. Thanks to Israeli technology, I can break up with my boyfriend through voicemail. Let's break up, guy. You can never stop discovering the different faces of Jerusalem. Israel is the leading exporter of cut diamonds in the world. Most of the day, you will have a clear blue sky. Afraid of a boring date? Speed dating is the Israeli solution. Golda Meir was the third woman to lead a country in the modern world. Visit the desert in spring, and instead of a dry wasteland, you see green, flowery hillsides. You can drive through the entire country without losing your favorite radio station. You can float in the Dead Sea. 40 minutes from the holy sites of Jerusalem to the wild parties of Tel Aviv. Traffic not included. There are over 100 sushi restaurants in Tel Aviv. Woohoo! Israel has a special holiday where everybody plants new trees. So the typical breakfast in Israel is a Greek salad, Turkish coffee, and a French toast with an Israeli bill. Israel is love to celebrate life. In Israel, you can do a song of people honking in the street. <laughs> on every street, you can buy freshly squeezed juice. In Israel, an argument is considered to be a sign of friendship. University campuses in Israel have a great atmosphere. Over 44% of lawyers are women. Highest number of PhDs per capita in the world. On your way to the beach, you can stop in one of the many bookstores. You can cross the whole country in under six hours. More than 90% of the Israeli homes use solar panels to heat their water. After every gefilte fish, you can always have a good falafel. Falafel! Everyone can tell you the best hummus place and it will never be the same one. Life expectancy is very high. Bamba, that puffy peanut butter snack that you can't get enough of. Aroma has delicious coffee, and they give you chocolate. In the market, you can find spices from all over the world. The first USB was created in Israel. Israel was the first country to ban underweight models. The sunrise in Masada is absolutely breathtaking. On every corner of the street, you can enjoy different types of music. 
If you're lost, you will always find someone who will help you. You can easily find free public beaches. Did you know Israel is the leading country in the desalinization of water? Moneva got the Chagall all in one place. Wherever you are, take your swimming suit with you because in 40 minute stops, you'll be at the beach. Israel has the most orchestras per capita. Israel is the country with the third most companies traded on NASDAQ. Highest number of women entrepreneurs per capita. You can eat Mac falafels in McDonald's. Israel is the vegan capital of the world. You can grow your own oranges. If you are too lazy to walk, you can easily find an electric bike. Israel is full of beautiful people. Also, the JIJ is here.